Where were you when the Wright brothers took their first flight? Oh, that's right, you were probably busy not existing. Unless you are literally the oldest person alive, in that case, welcome to the internet. But in a couple of days, another event, perhaps just as significant in aviation history, will happen again, and this time it'll be on the planet Mars. On February 18th, 2021, NASA's fifth Mars rover named Perseverance landed successfully after a six-month journey. On board, there was a very important passenger that's a helicopter named Ingenuity, the very first powered aircraft on Mars, or any planet other than Earth, that we know of, of course. But Ingenuity really isn't what we typically imagine a helicopter would look like. I mean, it resembles more of an overachieving egg drop protection device than a helicopter, but don't judge a book by its cover. But to build this Martian helicopter, engineers actually had to find some creative ways to get around flight principles that we kind of take for granted on Earth. Like for example, how do you actually create lift when the density of the atmosphere on Mars is only 1% of that of Earth's? Or what about the lack of access to fuel within a say 200 million kilometer radius? On top of that, how do you even fly an aircraft when there is a 20 minute lag between the controls and the physical aircraft? So I guess we can say the engineers really channel their inner ingenuity for this one. Don't click away, I'm done with the puns, I promise. Let's get into the video. Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. For access to thousands of documentaries and my video streaming service, Nebula, check out the link in the description. Well, the obvious question here is, how is this aircraft even going to get off the ground? Because on Mars, the atmospheric pressure is around 0.088 pounds per square inch, compared to Earth's 14.7 psi. In other words, the air on Mars has less than 1% density as air on Earth at sea level. And that's a bit of a problem since any flying object needs to rely on the density of the air to generate lift. Since air density decreases as altitude increases, this gives us an upper limit on how high aircraft can fly. For helicopters, this limit is around 40,000 feet, whereas for fixed-wing aircraft, the record is around 90,000 feet. But with such a low atmospheric pressure, a helicopter flight on the surface of Mars would be the equivalent of a helicopter flight at 100,000 feet on Earth. And to understand how we can possibly make this happen, let's take a look at how lift is being generated on a typical airfoil. Lift generation is dependent on four main factors. Air pressure, velocity of the airfoil traveling through the air, surface area of the airfoil, and a number called the lift coefficient that is determined by the shape of the airfoil, and to some extent, air pressure as well. But for simplicity's sake, let's just focus on air pressure that's present in the lift equation directly. Now, since we're drastically decreasing the amount of air density available, in order to generate the same amount of lift, we need to either increase the surface area of each rotor blade or make them travel much faster. But keep in mind, if we do increase the surface area of each rotor blade, we're also adding additional weight, which would negate some of the additional lift that we've added. But more importantly, note that lift is proportional to the square of velocity, meaning for every one order of magnitude we make the rotor spin faster, we're increasing lift generation by two orders of magnitude. And that is exactly why the rotors on this Mars helicopter spin at around 2,900 RPM, around six times faster than the average 500 RPM of helicopters on Earth. But Mars is also giving us a little helping hand, because remember, to go upwards, we only need to generate a lift force greater than the force pulling down on the aircraft, determined by its mass and gravity. And luckily for us, the gravity on Mars is also about 62% lower than gravity on Earth. But regardless, it is still absolutely crucial that ingenuity is as light as possible. You know, normally we're a pretty fuselage positive community around here, but girl, you gotta lose the weight. The end aircraft ended up being just four pounds, or if you prefer a more universal unit of measurement, about 90 McNuggets. This includes its fuselage, which more resembles a tissue box containing its six lithium-ion batteries surrounded by its avionic boards containing the flight computers, and of course, the two carbon fiber rotors underneath solar cells for charging. Of course, there are also multiple sensors, gyroscopes, and two microphones and two cameras on board. 
probably so it can live stream on Twitch. And the entire aircraft is around half a meter tall with a rotor diameter of 1.2 meters. You'll notice that Ingenuity has two rotors, one on top of another, and in fact spinning in opposite directions. This is called coaxial rotors. And while it does generate a lot more lifts, the second rotor is needed to keep the aircraft stable. If a helicopter only has one main rotor, we know from Newton's third law that this spinning force would cause the fuselage to spin just as quickly, but in the opposite direction. Of course, this would not make for a very pleasant ride if you were sitting in the fuselage. That's why on most helicopters, we also see a tail rotor that generates some sideways force to counteract this torque. Another way of accomplishing this is adding a second main rotor, spinning in the opposite direction, and the opposing torque from each rotor would cancel each other out. And aside from providing stability and generating extra lift, coaxial rotors also allow the aircraft to be more compact. But there are some downfalls too. For one, the rotor hub needs to be much more complex for coaxial rotors, therefore introducing more probabilities of mechanical failure. Also, in order to have enough distance between the two rotors so that they don't collide, the added height of the rotor hub may introduce some additional drag as well. Now, as I mentioned in the start of the video, this helicopter can't just fly to a nearby helipad and refuel. It needs to be completely self-sustaining. It uses solar cells to charge its 40-watt-hour lithium-ion battery, which can power the aircraft for a 90-second flight when fully charged. And this battery takes around an entire day to recharge. And surprisingly, the majority of this battery power is not used during flights, but in fact, two-thirds of its energy is used to keep the aircraft warm, especially during cool Martian nights, where temperatures can reach as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius, compared to the lower standard limits for most electronics and chips of just minus 20 degrees. To keep the electronics warm, engineers initially considered using aerogel, the lightest solid in the world, only twice as dense as air, and coincidentally, also a great insulator. But even that turned out to be too heavy. Instead, engineers are relying on the fuselage shell that encloses the batteries and avionics to trap in enough carbon dioxide gas to serve as an insulator. So you might be wondering, how do we fly a helicopter remotely when we're so far away? Well, the answer is, we don't. Since it takes up to 20 minutes to send data to and from Mars, the moment we received any feedback on Earth, the entire flight would have already finished. So the aircraft is designed to fly entirely autonomously, using a closed feedback loop algorithm that measures where the aircraft is going, comparing that to where it's supposed to go, and changes the flight control surfaces to make up for the difference. The new position of the aircraft is then measured again by the system, and again compared to where it's supposed to be heading, and this loop continues on and on. And this calculation and adjustment, which is happening hundreds of times per second, gives us the illusion of a smooth flight. And similar to other traditional NASA spacecraft, there is also a sequencing engine on board that the engineers back on Earth can upload a sequence of commands onto, and the helicopter will simply execute those commands. And these commands are usually waypoints that are simulated in advance, and the helicopter simply follows the trajectory of these points and land. This is basically a very simplified version of how autonomous helicopters will work in the future. And of course, on Mars, there are a lot less variables like traffic or distractions to worry about. And of course, there are a lot of limitations to this autonomy. For example, if anything goes wrong on the ingenuity, like a sensor malfunction, the aircraft will try to land immediately using its last recorded states. And at that point, we'll have to wait for instructions from Earth on how to proceed. So why did NASA make this helicopter anyway, since it doesn't look like there is going to be a huge helicopter market on Mars anytime soon? Well, Ingenuity is meant to be a test prototype to demonstrate three main principles. First, it provides a proof of concept for powered aircraft on different planets, especially with low air density. And if it's viable, we could potentially use aircraft to survey terrain that is either too steep or dangerous to send rovers on in the future. Secondly, it's also a demonstrator aircraft for miniaturized flight technology, since everything from its batteries to its rotors to its flight computers needed to be minimized and made as light as possible. And third, it also helps test the operation of an autonomous aircraft in a relatively simple environment. 
And probably one of the most impressive feats of the Ingenuity is just how accessible all of its components are. For one, all of its software runs on Linux, an open source operating system, using an open source flight software framework that NASA developed called F Prime for the autonomous flights. On top of that, almost every single component used to build the Ingenuity were purchased right off the shelves, meaning that if you really wanted to, you could basically make your own replica Martian aircraft. So far, Ingenuity is planned to complete up to five missions within a 30-day window, after which Perseverance will need to move on, regardless of whether the aircraft is working or not. And since the aircraft relies on the rover for communications, it will essentially be abandoned, despite its $80 million price tag. And I can't even throw away my empty computer box. I wonder if NASA has explored ways to possibly reattach Ingenuity to the Mars rover or somehow land it on top of Perseverance as it travels. But given that it's NASA we're talking about here, I suspect the answer is yes, they've tried, but no, reusing the Ingenuity was just not on top of the priority list. But so far, only the first three missions have been planned, where the helicopter will simply land where it took off from, and probably take some cool pictures along the way. And if all goes well, hopefully we'll get to see some more advanced flights for the last two missions. Who knows, maybe we'll even see a barrel roll in there. If you like learning about planes and want to support more independent creators like me, you should check out Nebula. It's an educational-ish video streaming platform where I'm joined by dozens of other females in STEM and fellow aviation creators like Real Engineering and Wenover Productions. I'm really happy to be a part of this platform where creators can experiment with our content without having to worry about demonetization or the algorithm. We've also partnered up with Curiosity Stream, a video platform with thousands of documentary films and TV series on everything from astrophysics to true crime. If you're interested in learning more about Perseverance, I'd highly recommend their brand new documentary called Countdown to Impact, where you get to go behind the scenes and learn from the team behind this incredible landing. And in addition to giving our viewers 26% off, you can get access to both platforms when you sign up for Curiosity Stream using the promo code JennyMa, all for less than $15 a year. If that sounds good to you, check out the link in the description. So there we have it, a little explainer on how NASA built the very first powered aircraft for another planet, and some cool facts about Ingenuity that you may not have known before. What did you think of this Martian aircraft? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up to tell the YouTube algorithm to share this video with more people. And remember to subscribe to my channel for new aviation content every Thursday. But thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.